Hello and welcome back to HTML5 and CSS3 for the real world. I'm Louis Lazarus and we're rolling right along here with our CSS3 features and we've talked a little bit about CSS transparency and RGBA colors so let's now introduce a new way of working with colors that many developers think is much more intuitive and much better for tinkering and making adjustments to colors on a web page and that's the use of HSL or HSLA colors. So let's introduce that to you by just by just changing our background color of our element here to an HSL equivalent. So here's the page we're, we're continuing to work with with that orange colored background. Let's change this to an HSL color and we'll see how this works will break down this syntax so we're going to include three values here and that when we refresh the page here in Chrome will produce the exact same result so whatever we had before is the same this is the HSL equivalent of that hex color that we had in there before so let's break this down and then we'll show you exactly how why this is a, such a great way of introducing colors into a document or are changing and adjusting colors in a document. So we have three values here and they basically stand for H, S, and L which is hue, saturation, and lightness. So the first one, hue, is expressed without a unit and it takes a number from 0 to 359. Now that's uh, for all practical purposes all you'll need. So if you go any higher then 359 then the colors start the hue settings or colors that you choose start to repeat and if you go lower than zero then it's exactly the same you, if you use negative values it's the same as zero so let's try this out so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here so I'm going to change the hue to zero and then refresh the page and now you'll notice we have something closer to a red value so some basic uh, color values that you might be familiar with here. If you want to get a, a green color, you would do 120. So there's a green, and then we have the other value set as well, which is why the green kind of looks like a really lime, limey, bright green. If you want a blue, you would do 240 that gives us a blue color so let's look at the other two values so we have the second value here in this HSL function which is the saturation so the saturation is re represented using a percent value and it represents the num the percentage of the hue that you've selected so if we were to choose something smaller here let's try 10 percent now we get something closer to a gray so if we 100 percent represents the full saturation of the color we've chosen so this is kind of like the normal look of the color represented by 240 so if we choose something higher than 100 percent, say 120 percent, then it basically is the same as 100 percent. It it doesn't recognize anything higher than that. I mean, it does recognize it, but it's the same as 100 percent because you either have 100 percent saturation or you have something lower. Anything higher, there is nothing higher than 100 percent in this example, or in this type of um, calculation of of saturation. So likewise, if we were to choose a negative number here, then it would be the same as choosing zero. And if you notice there, zero basically becomes a gr some shade of gray. So this, a, a zero value will be a shade of gray because basically you're saying that this color, which is a 240, which is blue, you're saying that this color has no saturation, is completely desaturated. And so the tone of gray that you see here depends on the third setting in our HSL function here, which is the lightness setting. So the lightness, once again, it takes a percentage. Let's make this one 100%. So 
so that likeness takes a percentage and if you go to a hundred percent that will give it hundred percent light which means it will be all white and if you go to zero and that will make it completely black so once again whatever color this is whatever hue you've chosen you're telling the browser to render this in a certain level of lightness so if you have no lightness on that color then obviously there would be no no shade of blue whatsoever if you do one percent well, you can't even see much of anything there so the lighter we go then we finally see start to see it get a little brighter towards the blue that is so let's choose the red here and so we'll use the zero and then we're going to do 100% and 50%. So standard setting, a standard lightness setting to see the red exactly the way it naturally should be seen would be 50%. And then a standard saturation setting would be 100%. So anything different here changes the actual original hue of this color that you've chosen here. And of course, just like RGB colors, you can add an alpha channel and make it HSLA. And so we just comma separate uh, opacity setting, and then it gives us some opacity there. Now we're not going to discuss that in detail. We've already covered opacity, so we're only dealing with HSL values in this particular step. So the same principles apply to what we already discussed with regards to opacity. So that's the basic syntax. That's how it works. That's what all the three values here represent. So why are these colors or the HSL colors such a big step forward as far as being able to control what colors we use? Well, it's not just how colors are defined because we can easily just convert this over to a hex value and it will be exactly the same look as long as we weren't worried about opacity, an opacity channel or an alpha channel. But it's what what makes this a great method of, of colors, of defining colors, is how the colors are actually chosen. So if you're designing your website, say in Photoshop, maybe it's not such a big deal. But many designers are designing right in the browser nowadays, choosing their colors and their, colors and their shades <laughs> right inside the browser. And so HSL makes it easy to compare and improve color choices. So let's do that right now and see what we can get. So we're going to start with a red here with our element. And let's say we didn't like this red. We wanted to choose something that complemented the background a little more. Well, we could incrementally go up and just choose a different shade of red. So the first one here, the hue, chooses colors in degrees. This is a degree value, but without the degree uh, values specifically declared like we do the percent so this is degrees as represented on the color wheel so on the color wheel colors that are close to or numbers that are close to each other are very similar in shade so if we chose 15 which is what it is here and then went up to 16 you would hardly see any difference so let's start to change it slightly notice it changes to a green or, or uh, sorry an orange where did I get green from that? And then if I change it up to 35, that becomes something in between an orange and a yellow. It's kind of a light orange or something there. Maybe up to 46. Now we're getting closer to a more solid yellow. If we go up higher, it gets a brighter yellow. Even higher, now we're getting close to green. If we make it 90, now we get close to a more solid green. And you see how intuitive this is. It's easy to select a new color. So whatever color you have on your page and you're trying to match something to it, you can just gradually change the colors and then it naturally happens uh, from one to the next. It's easy to recognize color changes from one to the next and it's easy to change them. So this is different from how you would change colors with RGB. So if we keep going higher here, we'll get a, a different shade of blue even higher and you'll notice this will eventually turn into purple which is the next one in the color wheel so it's very very intuitive so just like RGB or hex you can put an HSL color anywhere where a color value can be taken that means backgrounds borders outline text color whatever you want so what is browser support 
for HSL. Well, HSL is supported in every browser except for IE 6 to 8. This includes mobile. It has very, very good support in all modern browsers and even older versions of Firefox, uh, Chrome. So uh, the only ones that are really causing a problem, of course, as usual, are IE 6, 7, and 8. Even IE 9 supports these. So if you're going to be using HSL, or sorry, HSLA for for your background colors then you can what you can do is you can convert your HSLA color values using this tool here so this is a website uh, kimili.com and if you google this title here RGBA and HSLA CSS generator for Internet Explorer so he's got a little bit of a tool here where you can input an RGBA or HSLA value and it will convert it to an IE filter again filters are not the greatest but you can use those and not, there is a little bit of a bug in this that when you put it in here without the zero it doesn't like it and so once you add the zero to the alpha setting then it accepts it just fine I think if I do that yeah that should be fine as well so zero say 0 0.7 so if we're using HSL with an alpha channel then we can convert it using this tool and it will give us this filter for IE8 and IE6 and 7 here so again, you might have some performance issues to keep in mind. This is not standard CSS. Some people don't like using this sort of thing. So, if, But if you need a background to look the same with an alpha setting, then you can use that. If it's just RGB or just HSL with no alpha, then you don't need to do this. In fact, you could just take any HSL value and convert it to hex, and you don't even have to use HSL. So that's the great thing about using HSL. You can mess around with all your colors in your in your HTML when you're building your site and use a modern browser that supports HSL but then when you actually go to production you can convert all your HSL values to hex using uh, any one of number of HSL to RGB or hex conversion tools so as long as you're not using the alpha channel here then you can easily convert these and then that way you can have all the, the all the great intuitiveness of using HSL colors when you're creating your designs and then have the final output that works in all browsers including IE 6 to 8. So that's it. That's our discussion of HSL colors and colors in general here in this lesson. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.